Hi. Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. My name is Siti Fadila. Okay, you can call me Cik Gudila. And today, I will continue our lessons about microorganism. But in this video, I will focus more on the life process of microorganisms. Microorganism is tiny living things. So that means microorganism is a living things. So for a living things, especially microorganism, they also breathe. Seems like a human, seems like a plant. Don't think that microorganisms don't have a nose. How can they breathe? Remember, plants also don't have nose. <laughs> they also breathe. Right. Okay. So microorganisms can move and microorganisms grow. So we look at the first one which is microorganism breathe. Microorganism breathe, if you can see here, okay, we have a bread dough and then this one after 30 minutes. Ah, so can you explain what happened to the dough? What actually happened is in the dough we add yeast. So, microorganisms in the dough breathe. They take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. And this is the experiment. How can we make that dough? Okay. So, this is the aim for the investigations. To investigate the relationship between the presence of yeast in the bread dough and the size of dough after 30 minutes. Okay. This is your aim. And then hypothesis. The presence of yeast causes the dough to rise because the yeast breathes and produces carbon dioxide. That's why your dough increases or rises. And variables. We have manipulated the presence of yeast in the bread dough, responding the size of dough after 30 minutes. And the constant variable is the amount of sugar and flour used to make the dough. The apparatus and materials needed. And you can see from the diagram, we have two empty bowl, flour, warm water, sugar and yeast. So how can we do the experiment? This is the step. So we take a cup of flour and mix with a tablespoon of sugar in a bowl. And then we add warm water, about one three cup. After that, the mixture is divided into two parts, which is part A and part two, uh, part A and part B. And after that, a teaspoon of yeast are added into a mixture of A. That means we only add the yeast at bowl A, mixture A. Both mixture and B are kneaded into dough. And then the dough is left for 30 minutes. So let's see what happened. So we can see the microorganism breathe through this experiment where you can see A, B. We have dough A and dough B. After 15 minutes, dough A as start becomes bigger. And then after 30 minutes, dough A are bigger compared than dough B. This shows that microorganism breathing and release carbon dioxide. So that's why the dough A rises. So the observations we can see dough A bigger compared than dough B. No change from the first experiment until 30 minutes. Then the inference, what we can say is about this experiment is dough A becomes bigger because the yeast in dough A takes oxygen and release carbon dioxide when it breathes. So it's breathing. The carbon dioxide gas which is trapped in the dough causes the bread dough to rise. Dough B does not rise because there, it has no yeast. We don't add yeast at dough B, we only add yeast at dough A. So as a conclusion, the presence of yeast causes the cause the dough, the dough to rise because yeast breathe and produce carbon dioxide gas. Okay guys. Next, we also have another kind of uh, experiment that we can show that microorganisms breathe by doing this experiment. So the aim of this experiment is to show that yeast breathe and release gas. Okay, what we can do, this one is much easier where we just take a plastic bottle and then we add a lukewarm water. And then after that, we put 3 teaspoons of yeast into the bottle. And then we add a tablespoon of sugar and then we shake the bottle. And what happens? Actually, after a few minutes, around 30 minutes, actually we can observe that the balloon is start to become bigger. So that shows that carbon dioxide release. Okay, so that is 
the change that we can observe and then start your inference and inference uh, seems like the previous experiment so why is sugar used in this experiment actually sugar is used in this experiment as the food for the microorganism food for the yeast so the yeast have food the yeast are alive and then yeast are breathing so that's why it can release carbon carbon dioxide what happened if sugar replaced with salt okay what actually happened when you replace sugar with salt actually the yeast cannot live the yeast cannot live in a in that kind of conditions salt is not food for the microorganism sugar yes next so microorganisms grow yes microorganisms grow for example this is the most common example when you take a bread bread <laughs> okay so day one and then you left it after seven days and then you can see dark spot on the bread so actually what happened microorganisms already grow on the bread okay microorganisms grow and reproduce like other living things so microorganisms need water food and a suitable temperature and environments to grow well so that is what happened to the bread when you left it after seven days okay so this is the factors that affect the growth of microorganisms so you need to take notes about these things because without this factors okay microorganisms cannot grow the first one is water the presence of water and then the presence of nutrients acidity if the conditions of the microorganisms live at a certain conditions that too acidic or too alkaline so the microorganisms cannot live so that is the acidity and then temperature if the temperature is too high or too low for example if the temperature is too low you put it into the fridge so the temperature is low microorganisms are not active it's not that yet but it's not active so it can slow down the growth of microorganisms but if you put it at very high temperature for example you cook it some of bacteria or microorganisms will be that so that is the effect of temperature next we have air since microorganism breathing so it they are breathing they take it take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide so without air microorganisms cannot grow next so food <laughs> this is the explanations so food with high content of water such as vegetables fruits are easily rotten you know that and then the presence of nutrients help microorganisms grow faster if you give them nutrients you grow faster seems like seems like human if we take supplements we take healthy food so we get a sufficient nutrient so we grow faster next acidity so microorganisms cannot grow in a very acidic or very alkaline medium next temperature growth will be slow or no growth at all at the temperature if the temperature is too high or too low okay air yes microorganism needs air to breathe next the third one it which is microorganisms move so how microorganisms move actually microorganisms don't have leg but they have a cilia and flagella so microorganisms move toward food source and away from unfavorable stimuli such as acid and bright light so microorganisms have special structures such as cilia and flagella to help them to move so they don't have leg but they have the cilia and flagella i think that's it for our lessons today so this is the figure for microorganisms aha moving microorganisms okay thank you for listening like and subscribe my videos thank you bye